Welcome to a Sports Sesh podcast. I'm your host, Mason Shatwell, and my co host is James Evans. And today we've got Bellator MMA fighter Cal Eleanor on. Cheers for joining us, Cal. Cheers for having us on, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, how are you doing? Doing really good. Really, yeah, really good. Uh, just finished a hard day's training. I'm going to take the full day off tomorrow. So, first day off I've had in weeks as well. So, I'm excited for it. Like, <laughs> Well, I know it's only been a couple of months since athletes have been able to start training. Before you was allowed back in the gym, how was you training at home or was you doing much at home? Uh, oh, well, it was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest, because I don't know what it's been like everywhere else, but even still here, like the gyms are still a bit funny about with what's going on. I mean, some gyms are not even allowing contact yet. Um, our gyms were like some of the last ones to open, you know, so um, it was tough. I was just using my bike mostly, getting loads of riding done, just uh, lots of running um, and just doing some little workouts in, outside, you know what I mean? Just trying to tick over and trying to stay fit. I mean, they didn't give us any any dates or anything like that uh, to look forward to. They just said, kind of stay, stay as fit as you can. So I just kind of just knuckled down and did my own thing, really. Well, um, I know you've not fought since, I think it was early last year. How, how does it feel, obviously, not fighting for such a long time? I know your last fight that was cancelled, obviously, we couldn't do anything about that. But how does it feel not fighting for such a long time? Um, it's, it's weird. It's like... Um, Obviously, I've just been in the gym, so I've just kind of, I've just kind of kept myself busy. But it's 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 one of them things, isn't it? I mean, like when I first turned professional back in the day, I had a, a long gap where I didn't end up fighting then as well. And it's kind of just like I'm in the gym, still keeping me time, and I'm still training. So it's kind of like um, it's just one of them things. I mean, I don't believe in ring rust and stuff like that. I feel like that's just. Um, I feel like that's something that people feel when they're putting too much pressure on themselves if they've had a long layoff or maybe come back for the wrong reasons or whatever. I feel like that's that's more more of a real thing than what actually rust, ring rust is. Uh, I took I had a gap from fighting for nearly four years um, and I got back in there and I was more comfortable in there than what I was than from before I took the break. So I'm just looking forward to getting getting a fight sorted and getting back in there. You know what I mean and. Um, and just doing what I do. I'm really looking forward to just getting another one under the belt and just moving on. Forget about, obviously, the COVID pandemic. If you were in a proper fight camp right now, what would be your daily routine coming into fight week? Fight week? Um, fight week's kind of the, the easy week, really. I mean, obviously, I've got to cut weight. But aside from that, it's mostly just visualisation. Um, I like to go over some last-minute techniques uh, on the mats and stuff like that, like stuff we've been specifics basically for what we've been doing for their individual fight um i like to get some just light movement in just to keep the body sweating um obviously i'm filled with water that week as well so it's just nice to just get in the gym and just kind of just pass some time and keep your mind off stuff so that that last week's mostly just about the cut and visualization obviously for those who don't know as a mma fan what would you say is the best tool in your arsenal that you can bring to the table um just me pace. I like the kind of, I'm, I'm busy when I'm in there. I feel like I don't really kind of take my foot off the gas too much. I kind of, I like to push a pace, whether it's grappling or wrestling or striking. I feel like I do push a, a good pace. And I feel like that the style of fighting that I bring makes people kind of fight my way a bit as well. And they up the pace. So I feel like that's kind of, just I would just say me pace is something that my style is something for people to watch if they're looking for something to pick out of my style. Well, I know your past three fights have obviously fell through and it's all been against the same opponent, James Gallagher. How's it felt, the fight not going through three times in a row? Oh, it's been an absolute nightmare, hasn't it? Uh, I mean, I should be three fights ahead of me three, you know, and uh, be in a much better position. But nah, it's it, it is what it is, you know what I mean? It's life. Uh, it's especially MMA life as well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always a crazy, crazy road, you know what I mean? So it's um, it's just one of them things, I suppose. It's, um, I mean, I've got a, I've signed the contract. I've got a fight coming up. I can't say who or when yet, but they'll probably be announcing it this week, and it's not too far away. So that's something to look forward to. I've been, I've been pushing myself and getting ready for that. Um, so hopefully, the, I mean, I thought it would have been announced by now. So hopefully that'll get announced this week. So that'll be a good one to. To look out for it's going to be a big one as well. Well, leading up to some of the fights that you were supposed to have with James, um, there's been quite a bit of animosity. Where, where could you tell us where some of this has come from? 
I honestly couldn't even tell you. Um, <laughs> it's just James in general, isn't it? He, he likes the he likes the cause of force and stuff like that. And that's not really my style, you know what I mean? If someone wants to have that kind of back and forth with me, then I'm I'm all up for it. And if someone wants to be cool, I'll be cool. It's to me, I'm not really I'm not really asked about who the person is I'm fighting or what they say. Like I just know in my head what I can do and I know where I believe I should be. So whoever I'm fighting, they, whatever whatever things they see in me is ammunition or whatever, I just use it as a motivating factor to just just get me out in the gear in the gym and push even harder. So it's it's fun as well, you know what I mean? Uh, the 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 things that he said and stuff like that. It's it's getting people interested and it's uh, it's always it's always funny, you know. I, I at first I was kind of like I was going back and forth, and then I thought, you know what? Like I'm not I'm not even bothered about what he says. Like it's it's just part of it, and I just kind of I get to hit him eventually one day anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna be cool. Well, well, I'm sure it's only a matter of time till you do face James again. But when you do step in the ring with James, how would you beat him? I think I honestly think that I will submit him. I think that. I've, I feel like he's awkward and he's good at what he does. He's he looks strong in certain positions. Um, but I feel like if I can make it my kind of fight and pull him into a dog fight, I feel like uh, I'll eventually catch his neck or something like that. And that's how I feel like it'll go. I feel like I'll maybe hurt him a bit with strikes and he'll start making mistakes. And then that's when I'll catch him, catch him with a nice choke or something. Like that, and that's what I'm. Into. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you haven't even gone head to head with him. You may do later on in the line. Um, what do you make of him as an opponent? Uh, as an opponent, and do you feel like there's a bit of bad blood already, even though you haven't come face to face yet? <laughs> uh, as an opponent, yeah. It, as much as we've kind of give each other some stick back and forth, I kind of know him. Mean, he's definitely good, and um, he's definitely got good skills. Um, he's got particular areas that I think he's 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 got uh, holes in his game and I think he's got particular areas where he's strong um, so uh, overall he's definitely a tough fight um, I think he can cause people a lot of problems um, aside from that I, I just think like, I've got the answer for what he's good at and I feel like I can kind of implement that on the night and I feel like they are definitely underestimating my game um, and especially which is good good from my side they've only seen certain fights of mine or watch, watch footage and Everybody who knows me knows that the, my best is yet to come, you know. So I feel like if I can go in there and put it all together on the night, like I honestly feel like I want to walk through them and, and I feel like I will put them away. It's just uh, obviously, as you say, putting it together on the night. But I believe I will do it. And I, there's not a doubt in my mind. There hasn't been from the start, you know. And um, when the first time the fight got announced, my belief then was I would beat him convincingly then. And it's all this time later and I've only went from strength to strength. I mean, I'm on the mats. Every day with Ellis Younger grappling and, and some crazy, crazy high level grapplers, and I'm sparring top kids every day. And, and I'm just pushing myself more. I'm more motivated now than I've ever been. And I feel like it's going to show in this fight, like my level to what I was when I was first meant to fight teams. I'm a completely different athlete now, for sure. Obviously, we've seen the UFC returned in May. Um, from your personal opinion, do you believe that the better tour are taking the right precautions in order to come back safely? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like they've kind of, they've had the long layout, they've kind of left it, they've came up with a kind of strategy um, and they've did it in America and it worked fine and obviously these next shows, what's going to get announced, I mean, I feel like they've they've kind of seen the way certain people's done it and kind of took bits from each one and then obviously just went from there and built their own kind of strategy, uh, game plan essentially and I feel like it's good. I feel like they've, they've waited till the right moment. They've got everyone kind of, the, the whole kind of main pandemic's over it. There's still some areas that's thing, but they're going to use certain areas of the world where it's kind of like really low risk and stuff like that. And I feel like they've definitely done it the right way. Have well, Bellator like... spoken to you at all recently as to come fight week, what you can and what you can't do when you have arrived to the hotel, etc.? Not so much, not as yet. I mean, they've told us like briefly... Um, my corner men, I'm allowed to. I'm not allowed three corner men. I've got to have like yeah. less. Um, but they just basically, they just, they basically just. I got my contract. They got their name, got the date and stuff like that. Uh, signed that, and then basically they, they, they're gonna kind of play by play every every time there's more gets kind of organised. That's when we're here. So I just know I've got to have me uh, medics medical stuff and that done. I think it's booked in like the twelfth of the, this month, and then. 
uh, get all that cleared and then the rest of it's easy you know i'll just do what they tell us and fight when i need to fight and get it done i know you've got a professional mma record of eight and two with the two losses mm-hmm. on your record how did you deal with them losses and then bounce back into the cage um well the first loss um was a fight that i definitely won um I won it. It was uh, I took a, sh- a short. It was for an opportunity. Basically, I got offered a fight in South Africa uh, on a bit of shorter notice uh, at a catch weight. So I was like, yeah, definitely, it's a good opportunity. Fighting in another part of the world, I'll do it. And I went out there and I fought like some guy who. It was just a. It was an awkward style. It was a, the most negative kind of fight I've ever had in my life. I've never fought someone who didn't want to have a fight so much ever. Like, he was literally didn't want to engage at all, but he didn't want to land anything at all. He just ran the whole time. And eventually, it took a while to get me time, and then eventually I started catching him. And then, I don't know, kind of, there was there was loads of uproar about it out there back home. Like, I won the fight easy. It's on YouTube. If you want to watch it, I definitely won. And that was the first loss of my career. And I was just, I, I took it as a win because I got paid me win bonus. In my head, I won. I was still undefeated. Um... Then I won another couple of fights, and then when I, I fought for the the AFC title, uh, went out there, had like fought a decent guy out. Um, I just I just had a horrible cut, you know. The, I got told there was a water shortage, we couldn't hold the bath, we couldn't sauna. I had to try and work the weight off with a sweatsuit, and I don't know if you've seen in person, but I'm a big bantam weight anyway, so I absolutely like drained myself beyond belief. Uh, shit myself after the weigh-in, and uh, didn't put any of the stuff that I was meant and all my rehydration was just the pot after that because my belly was just in bits um, and I fought the way I felt you know what I mean I fought and lost the, I mean he, he is a good guy he's a big guy he's, he's uh, medal in the, in the Commonwealth Games and stuff like that it was a tough fight for sure but it was just I just didn't do myself a justice at all so I lost that fight I went the distance I fought five fives and I took a lot from it, you know, I got a nutritionist on board after that and, and I just took it as it's just a learning curve, I wasn't bothered about records at all or anything like that, it was just one of them things, you know, you li- live and learn and in MMA, unfortunately for us, our, our losses have to come by getting getting knacked basically or, <laughs> or getting hurt by someone, you know, it's not like a footy match where you lose and it's straight away, it's fine, it's forgetting about in MMA, it sticks at your record, you know, so mm. it's a bit of a stink to that side but I, I, losses and stuff like that uh, just like uh, water off a duck's back you know what I mean I just it happens and it's just all I'm thinking about is the next one straight away I'm like that when I win as well I, it's a momentary kind of buzz you know it's like a, a fight night I'm buzzing and then it's gone and I'm back in the gym and I'm like well what what's next kind of thing it's always the, the next kind of chasing the next buzz you know what I mean well with you being a Bellator MMA fighter how did it feel getting the call originally from Bellator to fight on such a big stage it was amazing. Um, it was funny actually. I was I was away. It wasn't long after I'd just lost that fight, and in losing that fight, I was meant to get a big fight in Japan. And well, I, I was meant if I'd won, I would have got the big fight in Japan uh, against a really good guy. So I was excited about that, and I lost, so that went away. So I was kind of on a bit of a downer about that. And I was actually away in London, and I was coming back from London. I got a message on my phone about it, um, and it was to fight Nathan Grayson. That the, there was all. Oh, We've got a fight for you, but if you if you fight on our show, we're going to give you a contract as well. So it's like, oh, awesome! Like that's kind of I've always wanted to fight in Bellator. My coach fought there years and years ago. He fought Joe T. Manglo and some really good guys. So I was like, oh, I've always fancied fighting in Bellator, you know. Um, and then when they said who it was, uh, I couldn't say no. Um, obviously coming up on the UK circuit, I'd seen Nathan Grayson uh, fight before. I'd, I'd seen who he was. I knew I knew who he was. I've seen him. I, Watch loads of his fights anyway. I'd seen his fight with Arnold Allen and Sam Creasy and stuff like that. And I knew obviously he was Cage where he was world champion at the time. So it was a opportunity that I couldn't let go. You know, I thought, oh, well, if I beat him, it's going to put me in a really good place. Um, so it was just straight away. It was just send us the send us the contract and I'll, I'll sign it now and, and get on with it. And that was it. Well, I know the three fights, obviously, that you've been scheduled to fight, James, as well, is the first one, obviously, um, it was down to... I think it was something to do with you, a brain scan or yeah. something. Uh-huh. I think, Brad, could you explain to us a bit about what went on there? Yeah, definitely. Um, I got a, basically, when I fought Nathan Grayson, I'd, I used my brain scan report from when I, my last fight in South Africa because um, it was still in date. Obviously, I don't know if you know, but brain scans are like 700 quid, man. They're a fortune. And obviously, when you 
I don't, Bellator was the only actual decent PD I'd ever got in my life when I was going to sign that fight. I thought this is actually, I can actually see it fighting my job a bit now, you know, as in, in the past I was fighting on the other side of the world and it was costing us more to, to have the fight than what it was, <laughs> you know what I mean, to, to okay. do it. So um, I basically, uh, I used the, the thing was still in date for that. I sent them the report from the first scan and they were like, yep, that's in date, that's fine, you can use that, no worries. I was like, sweet, four. Um, and then obviously when the James fight came about, they said, oh, you've got to do another brain scan. Um, your last one's not in date. So I was like, cool, whatever. Went and did a brain scan um, and that, everything was fine to me. I was like, right, I've done my brain scan. They've got it, cool, training on. Got so close to the fight and then I get a phone call saying, oh, there's something's come up on your brain scan. You've got to get an assessment. Um, you can't fight until you get this assessment because the neurologist is not happy with what they found on your brain. I was like, all right, cool. Like me thinking, oh, it's probably just maybe moved on the scan or something like that. And I've heard about this kind of happening to other people before. I thought, oh, well, nothing of it. I got in touch with someone who said the best person to see is this guy in London. He's done stuff for Nathaniel Wood before when he had this issue. Yeah, he's done stuff for, named a list of fighters anyway. And I was like, spot on, that sounds great to me. Went to London, uh, paid for a blast, like literally the next day, trained in London. Paid this doctor, and as soon as I got in there, he was just like straight away, just like told us the most horrendous stuff ever about how like I was basically potentially going to end up a vegetable. I've got on early like signs of um, what could be Parkinson's and stuff like that. He was using Muhammad Ali's reference, saying that's kind of the stuff what the, the come up on the scans like that. He was saying basically my brain scan was like is if someone had had a bad car accident and they'd just come in and had a scan and I was like what I was like. My style, I really don't really ever take that much damage. But on my last fight, really, I, I never really get hit that much. I've got quite a kind of countery kind of style. I was thinking, well, I've just engaged you. Look at the fights he has. How, how is he fighting? And has he looks like being hit by a freaking bus every time he fights. Like, what? I was like, how can that be the case? And basically, he was just saying that what had happened was my brain had started to get a, a gap in it and it was getting bigger. And that I had all these different spots of damage on it, and that, and basically just told us he would, if he, if it was him, he would never even spar again ever for the chance of what could happen. And they just basically told us all this horrendous stuff. Like obviously I've got kids and stuff, you know, I've got two kids, and it was the wor worst news ever, especially to be that close to a fight as well. So I was just well, is there any way I can just kind of have this one fight? Will you just sign it so I can get clean and have this one fight? Uh, I'll do the fight and then I'll, I'll retire if I have to. This is the fight where I kind of finally got myself to like being kind of on the door of becoming a, a, a name essentially of having a good performance against James um, and literally just they just knocked us back and obviously I come home and speaking back and forth with Bellator and just getting no further and saying oh this is going to happen we're going to pull you in it's getting closer and closer um, and then basically what ended up happening was they said that the only way that they could change anything was if I could get these images from my first scan. Um, so obviously as time's going on, I'm trying to get these images, which I tried to get originally. Uh, couldn't get the images. Um, my friend Alistair Bishop, who lives in South Africa, he's gone to the lab in Johannesburg trying to get the images for us and he can't get them. I've been phoning them, um, and then it was always just a closed door. I was ringing the AFC because I did me scan through them, and everyone was just saying the same stuff, and it was just taking us round and round in circles, and I couldn't get them. Eventually, uh, I got sent an encrypted file from the lab from the doctor, and I sent that safe, straight off to Safe MMA. At this point, by this time, the fight's obviously cancelled, and we've got James for replacement, and whatever. I'm thinking my career's curtains, you know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm never going to fight again, like. I didn't even know what I was going to do. I was heartbroken. Obviously, my mum's in a coma at the same time as well. So I've got all this stuff going on at the, at the same time. Just a horrendous time in my life. And then what happened was the, the scan images from the first scan were completely different. Uh, sorry. The report that I originally gave Bellator was completely different to what the scan images were shown. And the scan images were exactly exactly the same as me last scan what I do and there was no change in my brain at all like nothing so I've had 40 40 fights I've had now all together and my brain's always been the same so I've always had potentially these black dots on or whatever and this gap in my brain and um, and it's no different than the first scan but the the thing was the issue was with the report so in, when I fought in South Africa whether it's just been negligent or they've done purposely I don't know but the, basically in the report said that all of this stuff that they should be checking off and seeing 
marking down is is facts about my brain that basically just said that none of it was there. So they so obviously when they've got their which CFMME when they've got the first report and then they've got this new scan, it looks like there's like massive amounts of change. So obviously to them, in that short period of time, that much brain change and it is obviously serious. So they're saying like, look, in the prox- close proximity, this is a huge amount of damage to be taken. If it keeps going on like this, it's obviously it's going to lead to this kind of stuff. But obviously my brain was the same. So what they were saying was, oh, obviously to fight again, basically uh, you just need regular checks to make sure that nothing's changing in your brain because your brain might have always been this way. So now, and it's kind of, it's been a kind of, it's kind of a blessing, really, because now it means that every every time I fight, although it's a pain in the ass, I don't pay that much money. It means that I'm kind of get me kind of covering my bases and always making sure my brain's fine. So in in a in a weird way, it's kind of worked out all right. I mean, obviously, I'm fighting again, and that was the main thing to me. This is my career, you know. I've done it since I was 12, so it's 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 finally good to be to have something lined up and be back and actually get the chance to do it again. When you first started getting into MMA, was there a specific fighter or athlete that you looked up to in any way? Yeah, uh, weirdly, uh, there was a, there was a couple. I really liked uh, Tiago Alves when I first started. Uh, I thought he was cool. Uh, and Uriah Faber. I always liked Uriah Faber. Um, I was a fan of him, and when I watched his fight against Aldo, I, I loved I loved how he kind of handled that. You know, he got kicked to death and just super tough and didn't quit. And then. Brad Pickett, I was always a uh, Brad Pickett. I always thought he was a c- cool fighter. You know, I, I like the way he fought. Uh, he obviously boxed as well. But in the day, and I come from a boxing background originally. I had my first fight when I was twelve in it, boxing. You know what I mean? And so I always like Brad Pickett. I like the the way he moved and the way he fought. I thought it was really cool. Um, so that yeah, them three really. With a lot of fighters, sometimes it takes so much to to reach the pinnacle of the sport. Have you ever had to make any sort of sacrifices to get to the top? Um, I mean, yeah, just just lifestyle, really. I mean, obviously, yeah. like I don't really, um, I, I I live kind of boring life, really. I, I don't really do much. I train. Um, I like to get out on the motorbikes and stuff like that from time to time. Uh, I just a- anything like that, really. I mean, fighting's wild. I like doing daft stuff on pedal bikes and motorbikes or anything like just stupid like that. You know what I mean? But <laughs> aside from that, that's just lifestyle stuff. Like I don't, I don't drink. Um, I like to cheeky smoke from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, partial uh, cheeky smoke. Uh, now, but that, that's it. I mean, I don't. I rarely, I rarely get to do a lot of things because like my mates are out all the time. They're like going to the pub and stuff like that. So I kind of miss a lot of that. And obviously, it's, it's sacrificing with the kids. Like obviously, I've got two two kids, and I miss a lot of stuff that they they kind of do you know at home I'm at the gym a lot of the morning and then I come home and then I'm at the gym a lot of the night and then I'm running or especially if I've got a fight coming up as well I mean it's like double dose of training you know what I mean it's like extra and so I sacrifice a lot of that a lot of time with them but it's just just for the for the fact that like um I think it'll be worth it one day and I love what I do I love getting there to be in the gym around people that I train with and stuff like that I mean like it's uh, another family isn't it and it's 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 awesome and I, I just really enjoy improving uh, every day as a martial artist so that's just it the sacrifices really are yeah family ta- family time you touched up on before that you did boxing when you was younger would you say that's your favorite aspect of mixed martial arts uh you know what it's funny i i, I boxed out I, I, I won national title um back in 2006 i was junior year finalist 2007 i was in the boys clubs uh meddling that and it's like um, that was kind of a foundation that I came from, and and I like I like that kind of like you'll see if you watch me fights. I've got a long rangey kind of flashy striking style, but I kind of I just use that to set up the rest of my game. You know, I, I would class my my style or my or myself as a, a grinder. You know, I like to just I like to mix it up. But my my favorite aspect now, I mean, from all the years I've trained, and the thing that I enjoy most, is grapple, and um, I really. Um, I really enjoy grappling. I mean, I'm, I grapple every single day now religiously. Um, it's a big part of what I do now, and it's it's really has keep changed as well. I mean, when I first started MMA, it was I was so bad at it, and that was what made us fall in love with with the sport because I just wanted to get better at it. And then now it's it's my life. I mean, grappling. Even if I was not, I wasn't fighting. I would grapple every day because it's 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 just uh, 
it's a lifestyle. I just love being on the mats and I just love pushing myself in. I mean, even when I haven't got fights, I'll, I'll be getting grappling matches and stuff like that. And I mean, I had some, I had some lined up, some decent ones as well. But obviously, the fight came and the fights me. It's my career, whereas grappling's my hobby. Yeah. So that's it. I'd say my my favorite aspect. Yeah, definitely jujitsu. Definitely. You say you put pen to paper on a about agreement towards the start. If you do win that fight, what are the the rest of uh, your plans for 2020 leading into 21? And who would you like to fight next after? Uh, if I if I win, uh, if I win, and I'm not as long as I've been cursed. My last my last three fights, I've been I've had a cut. <laughs> I've said every said every time I've said right, I'm going to fight this fight. I'm going to get back in the gym the next day or two days after whatever. And I'm going to be straight back on it and I'm going to fight straight away again. And the last three times I've said that, <laughs> I got a, I got a cut, big cut on the top of my head, stitches. I got one above my eye of Nathan Grace. And then the fight before that, I got one under my eye. So I'm not going to jinx myself this time. But as long as as long as long I'm injury free after this fight, I'd love to fight again before the end of the year. Um, and if not, just fight when it comes. You know, If not, I'll definitely be wanting to compete in some grappling matches for the rest of the year and keep myself fit and keep myself in shape. Um, but either way, I want to do that anyway. But um, if I was to win, um, I think it'll really open some doors for us. And ah, mate, there's so many good people in the in the Vantamway division now. Um, anyone, realistically, whoever they see, there's not a fight that I'll I'll turn down. You know what I mean? I'll fight uh, any one of them in it for a chance to prove where I belong to be. You know, I believe that I'm one of the the good good guys in the division, and I believe that I will show it. And, so hopefully get a good win here and, and get one of the one of the upper echelon and, and prove me worth. As a mixed well, martial artist, how would you? How important is the mental side of MMA? Would you say? I think yeah, that's the most important part. I feel like if you can, I feel like even if you were see if you had really average ability and you were. Average everywhere, all around the average grappler, average striker, average wrestler, whatever. But if you were tough, you were fit, and you were mentally strong, I believe that that is enough to to cause problems for anyone. And um, so I definitely think mindset is is key. I think mentality. I think it's ninety five percent mental. Uh, the rest of it's just obviously training and getting in there and preparation. But I definitely think the mental aspect of it's one of the the bigger parts of the game for sure. Out of all the fights you've had, do you ever get nervous? And if so, which fight have you been most nervous for? I get more nervous the more fights I have. Anyone who says that the door is a liar, and everyone I've heard this, I've heard this of lots of people saying, "Oh, you get you get better at it, and the nerves you thing. And I feel like I've always kind of dealt with the nerves all right. It's more sure the pressure I put on myself because I believe that I I want to show where like me level and I, every fight I'm like right I I want to go in there and really put on a show and let people see what kind of what I do in the gym you know what I mean I want to show people how good I am and the stuff I pull off in training and stuff like that and uh, so I do put a lot of pressure on myself in that aspect but uh, I, I, I get really nervous I can't lie uh, every fight gets worse um, it's terrifying you know what I mean I feel like the most nervous I've ever been um, I was nervous for the Nathan Grayson one that was, that was a bad one Um for the simple fact, um, obviously, I knew Nathan was super dangerous. We knew that from the start. Um, I've seen him knock a few kids out, you know, a few high-level kids as well. Um, I, I went to Sweden a couple of weeks prior to this. I come back really heavy. I had a massive weight cut, killed myself there. So that was in the back of my mind. And not only that, I was sparring uh, Perry Goodwin. Uh, I can't remember if it was a week out from the fight. Um, we're having a bit of a scrap in the in the gym, and uh, the rounds of TFT are always savage. And Perry's a heavy hitter, and Perry hitters were a, uh, he basically had a single leg, dropped a single leg. Hitters were a really heavy left hook around the back of me, kind of behind me ear, uh, rang me bell a bit, um, and I was obviously a bit of, a bit dazed off that. And obviously I continued on, got through it, whatever. And after the fight, kind of a little, I think I was a little bit concussed, and and that was in the back of my mind as well. I was like, I'm going into this fight against a Really heavy-handed kid, really dangerous kid. I've just took a canny bad knock at the weekend where I had my bell rang a bit and then obviously I've cut all this water and had all these little demons playing in my head, you know what I mean? And that was in the back of my mind and I was like, right, I, I need to 
get in there. So that whole thing just caused this whole mad kind of emotions backstage. So I was I was nervous about that one, but at the same time I was kind of was really excited as well because like uh in in them kind of dog fights that's when I always I always do something better, you know, like if if I'm in a scrap like that, like although it's crazy and I'm in the trenches, I, I always end up coming I, that's where I kind of find like that my style works, you know, and then that kind of chaos and, and then that kind of fight it shows, you know, if you watch a battle it took a hell of a beating and kind of just stayed calm through it and I feel like that kind of shows how comfortable I am in there now and, and, and it was just it, as crazy it was I had so much fun in there like crazy amount of fun and it was just a f- super fun fight and then obviously to come out of that and get get the win like that as well especially in the, in the first round against someone like that was a that was a special one but that was definitely one of the ones I was more nervous for for sure well I know every fighter's dream is going to be a, to be a world champion in the in some of the biggest organizations and obviously you're fighting in one of the biggest organizations there's been in Bellator is mm-hmm. there a time frame that you'd like to achieve the champion status by um you know what if I, if 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 I ever if I ever did get the belt amazing um, and if I was to put a time frame on it, I mean, I'm 29 now. I'd say sometime in the next couple of years, tw- end of 21, maybe 22 would be perfect. You know, I've kind of, I feel like that's your best years. I'm 29 now. I feel like 29 to 32, 33, I feel like that's your kind of, you've got your wisdom, you've got your experience. Yeah, I feel like that's your peaks. So in that time there, if I do it, that would be amazing. Or even fighting for it then would be amazing. Um Obviously, a one fight at a time. Get this one out of the way and see who I get next. And if I do win this one, get a, another big name and, and see if that puts us somewhere up there. I mean, I feel like if I win this one, it'll definitely be definitely putting us in the in the talks of it, you know. So we'll see. Um, but I just, you know what? I would love to be champion. I'd love to see I did it and I got there and I was a world champion. And, and that is definitely me aim and that's definitely me motivation and me one of my main ambitions. But um. What I also want just as much as that is I just want to be kind of in memorable fights and I want to be a, a, just a household name. You know, I want people around the world to kind of know who I am and and and, and what like what I do, basically. I mean, I like putting on a show and I want people to kind of know who I am and, and open opportunities for kids where I'm from. You know, it's like kind of in the northeast of England, people get overlooked a lot. Um it's always been that way, and I, I just feel like if I if I can do some make some big waves in this, especially in this organisation and in this sport, future future generations and stuff like that, kind of hopefully open some doors for them. As a bit well, of a follow on from Mason, what would you, why why are you the man to conquer the bantamweight division at Bellator? And just me style and kind of I feel like I've got a lot of kind of tricks up my sleeve. I mean I'm. I'm big for the weight. I'm long and I can wrestle, I can grapple, and I feel like my striking style's awkward to deal with, uh, especially in the little gloves, you know. Um, and I'm tough. Uh, I feel like that's one of my main attributes. I work really hard, and I feel like I can, I can take a lot of damage. And uh, I just feel like overall, I feel like I've got kind of a good recipe for for winning fights, and especially in this division, I feel like this is the division where I'm optimal. So I feel like. I feel like all of it together. I mean, I feel like you can be a better boxer than us, a better grappling than us, a better wrestler, whatever. But I feel like putting it all together, I, I, I mix it up quite well. And I feel like I've always, uh, there's always a chance I can, I can finish a fight from certain areas if it's grappling or striking. So I feel like that's why I feel like I've just got some some tricks up my sleeve that uh, a lot of people won't be used to. You well, mentioned that's... you're a, obviously a big bantamweight. Would you ever consider a move up to featherweight in the near future? Uh, it just depends on the fight. I mean, I fought my early career as a pro at featherweight, and I feel like, obviously, like I uh, um I do a decent size cut and stuff like that. But I just feel like frame wise, I feel like my build, I feel like I'm better set up bantam weight. I feel like yeah. I'm long and I'm skinny, but it's like kind of I'm kind of wiry and I'm I'm a decent build for it. And like my style works. Whereas at featherweight, I feel like the guys are like. It's weird, like in striking distance, it's fine. But I feel like when you've got them bigger guys who do bigger cuts off featherweight on top of you, I feel like it's mm. kind of like it's just that it's it's just that little bit where I'm just not my frames just not big enough for featherweight. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Stylistically, it just depends on the fight, really. You know what I mean? If I'm going to fight some 
midget wrestler who's going to come out and hug me hips for the whole time is going to be a nightmare who's you know what I mean who's twice twice the weight of his on the night then it's going to be a bit of a pain yeah. in the arse but if it's someone who's going to come out and have the, the right kind of fight with us then yeah I, I definitely do it you know it's an opportunity and it's fun and fighting's what I do you know what I mean it's my job so I would definitely I would definitely fight there but I feel like my my chance for doing well and where I feel like I'm optimal is definitely 135 You Competing in the, uh, I've got a couple more questions. Obviously, I appreciate your time for coming on, Cal. No yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I know you're a busy guy. You're doing a lot of training right now, so I won't uh, keep too much of your time. But um, <laughs> obviously, we're in this such unprecedented times. We're coming up towards the end of the year, and the better talk coming back to across Europe, and you'll be fighting soon. How much of a difference will it make fighting in an empty arena? To be honest, I feel like it'll be easier, if anything, you know. I feel yeah. like uh, it's going to be cooler um, in the air. Uh, obviously, sometimes on fight night, it's absolutely, when you walk out, it's absolutely boiling and you can feel it. Um, but who knows? I mean, obviously, the crowd gets you up for it as well. But I feel like you're having a fight, so you're going to be up for it anyway, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah. it's not, I, I just feel like once you're in there, once once you once you take a couple of shots or give a couple of shots in there, the kind of... The, the the whole build up of it's done and you're in there I feel like it'll be fine I'm looking forward to it as well <clears throat> and just one final one for me um, as a mixed martial artist yourself what would be your advice to the youngster uh, the youngsters wanting to succeed like yourself in the game of mixed martial arts or the sport of mixed martial arts uh, the best advice I would give honestly like is just to just to enjoy training and not put pressure on yourself I mean like uh, a lot of the time when I first started MMA I used to I used to beat myself up you know if I had a bad session or whatever I would come home and I'd be furious all day I'd be down in the dumps or whatever and now it's just like you know what it's life like literally like yeah. you have good days and bad days and it's the same in training like don't try and don't try and put too much pressure on your shoulders when you start putting pressure on yourself that's when you stop enjoying it and to me I feel like the the people who are more successful are the people who are just enjoying it you know I feel like all that will come and you get where you want to be if you just train and just enjoy your training and just just don't put pressure on yourself and just just train and learn and and listen that's the and listen to your coaches for sure like that's a you know people get a bit ahead of themselves and think they're bigger than what they are whatever i just feel like taking advice well is definitely what's going to help them yeah just one final one for me i just want to say you know good luck in your next bout now it's not all been agreed yet I've, I'm, unless you've got anything else to say mason i'm pretty much but done but yeah good luck for the rest of 2020, Cal, appreciate, appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Yeah, mate. That, that was it for me. I wanted to say thank you for coming on as well, Cal. We really appreciate it, mate. No, anytime. Thank you, lads. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good, good luck, mate. See you soon. Take nice care. One, thank you. See you soon, lads. Bye.